Thank you very much. Um, I would just like to say, start off by saying one thing. Nobody should expect Muslim people in this country to feel no affinity towards their brothers and sisters dying every single day in Iraq. Towards no type, no form of kinship towards the 1.4 million people who have been made refugees in Pakistan by Obama's bombs. You cannot expect Muslim people to feel no kinship towards their brothers and sisters in occupied Palestine, and you cannot expect Muslim people to feel no affinity towards their brothers and sisters in Afghanistan. Now, we cannot um, look at anything without taking into account its history. This room has a history. This has a history. This microphone has a history. Just like this country has a history. Just like France has a history. Now, where were the two sources of extremely xenophobic comments coming from this week? In the form of Sarkozy in France and in the form of the Daily Express from Britain. Now, let us not forget that after the First World War, it was the British and the French who sliced up the Middle East and North Africa with no respect or empathy for the indigenous people of those lands. Now this, now this is what we are talking about today. What we are talking about today is not a problem in Britain. It is a problem with the world. It is a problem of imperialism. It is a problem of a system which places importance and places priority on big business ahead of human life. Now it just so happens that the human lives we are talking about at the moment are predominantly Muslim. That is the case now. So colonization is not finished. Flags have just been replaced by huge big corporations. This is what we're dealing with and we're not stupid and we should never fool ourselves about this. Um, okay, I'll be brief. One point I would like to make is that um, we have certain parts of the media, not all of the media, certain parts of the media which act with um, very right-wing interests. So it's within their interest to demonize and dehumanize Muslim people. Full stop. Full stop. When you dehumanize a person, you can justify any crime you carry out upon them because they are not human and they are not the same as you. So you'll notice what they'll point out is physical differences. This is what they will try and make you feel passionately about. But really, it's not the physical difference, it's not the ideology, and it's not the faith that they have a problem with. It's the politics. Because they understand, they know deep down that Muslim people are angry and should be angry. This is what they have a problem with, and this is what they're afraid of. So they'll try and point out to you the physical differences, but they couldn't care less. They couldn't care less how a nun dresses. They couldn't care less how a Jewish man dresses. So why is it Muslims? Um, so basically, this campaign of constant demonizing, who does this serve? What does this serve to do? Well, this serves to justify, encourage um, what is essentially an abhorrent foreign policy, right? And in, in, in the wider scheme, it serves to exonerate any blame. So when you hear these words, like a million Iraqi people dead, you are desens desensitized to the word Iraqis dead. You are desensitized to these words because it's almost part of everyday life. On Wednesday, the 24th of June, 80 Iraqi people died. On Thursday, the 25th of June, one very, very, very talented American musician died, okay? We are seeing a much bigger outpouring of grief for this one human being than for 80 human beings in one day. In one day! So... Basically, that's pretty much it. The point I want to make, most importantly, is you must realize that a life is a life. A life is a life, and a human being is a human being. And the same value must be attached to all human life. And once that happens, then equality can become reality, and we can all live in peace and harmony how we should. Thank you very much.